to begin making your workbench, you're going to start with three 8 foot 4x4s four four and cut them down into 36 inches in length, getting a total of six legs. With the legs roughly laid out on the floor in their correct position, you're going to cut the connecting framing members using 2x4s. Two of these will be 8 feet in length, and the other two will be 45 inches in length. The idea here is to build your framing to the dimensions of a sheet of plywood, so 4 foot by 8 foot in total. The framing can be assembled by placing a block of wood under each corner of your frame. And then using a speed square with a clamp, you can ensure that everything is 90 degrees and screw it together. Once assembled, you can lift up the frame and secure it to two of the legs with some clamps. And then you can use a framing square to make sure that the legs and the frame are perpendicular to one another before screwing them into place. Moving over to the other side and repeating the process. Once all your corners are squared up and screwed in, you can put your remaining 4x4s in the center of your frame and drive some screws in. The final part of this upper frame is to install the joists. To install them, I measured in from either end of the frame, 16 inches, 32 inches, and so on, until they all were in place. In the center, I doubled up on either edge of the leg. With the framing now done, you can bring a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood over and lay it on top. Taking a block of wood and pushing up against the plywood and the frame at the same time ensures that the corner is aligned. And once that corner is secured, you can move the sheet into place across the rest of the frame, securing it into place with screws. Measuring down 29 inches to allow for ample shelf space, I made marks on each of the six legs so that I know exactly where I need to place the boards that will make up the lower frame. And just like the top shelf frame, you'll be using two 8 foot 2 by 4s on either side of this workbench. And the front and the back will be 45 inch 2 by 4s In order to move the workbench into its final location, you can use a furniture dolly on one end and then lift up the other end, rolling it into place. And once it's in its final resting location, you'll want to level everything out. You'll go leg by leg, typically working from one corner inward until all the sides are level. And here I'm taking two shims that I built and I'm pushing them underneath the leg. I can mark out where the shims meet the leg when resting on the floor. And this gives me the height that I need to cut my block to. And once that block is cut, you can walk over and put it underneath your leg. And with that, everything is leveled out. And as you can see here, the height of this workbench perfectly aligns with the height of my miter saw station you saw me build last week. The last step is to install a few support members on the bottom frame. And then down below, I'm using a thinner sheet of plywood. This is just quarter inch plywood. First, I'll be cutting it in half for easier handling and then cutting out a few notches for where the legs will slide into place. And once you have those cut out, you can take them below and slide them both into place, securing them with a few screws.
The second part of this video will be me installing my table saw into one end of the workbench. The first step is to measure the length and width of your table saw, and then giving appropriate clearance, you can transfer those lines onto your new workbench. With the lines marked out, I can run my circular saw along my four foot level as a straight edge and cut them out. With the hole that the table saw will fit into now exposed, I need to adjust the original framing that I put onto this workbench. Each of these little notches have a purpose. For my table saw, the fence has two bars on the front and the back that roll with the fence. So I need to make room for those to slide into. On the bottom shelf I'll be cutting a few holes to accept 2x4s that will become support members. This process is then repeated on the back two sides, using a circular saw and a jigsaw to cut both of the slots out and then feeding in the two by fours and screwing them in place. Here I'm marking out the height of my table saw plus the height of my three quarter inch plywood. And on the front I'm putting two blocks which will act as supports for the framing. With the table saw shelf built, I can now move on to ensuring that the table saw will function properly in the given space. In my case, I need to cut out a few more notches to allow for the fence movement. And the same thing goes for the bottom portion. I'll be cutting roughly half the depth of the plywood, so about 3 eighths of an inch. This was quite a messy operation, but it had to be done. With those notches cut, you can put the table saw in place and test the fit. And once you're happy with the functionality, you can secure the table saw in place using some shims. You want the top of the table saw to be just proud of the rest of your table. This will ensure that there will be no interference when using your table saw. The final step in this project is to cut some slots that the runners on my table saw sled can fit into. You'll notice here that I didn't make these slots long enough the first time, so I go back and make them just a little bit longer. This will allow the back fence on my sled to pass the highest point on the blade. The 
using a track software, this operation made everything move along pretty smoothly. You can just continue the lines from your miter saw slot down onto your table. And with that, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram if you'd like a little bit more activity. I'm much more active over there. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you in the next video.